Hello guys, and welcome back to the CAFCast! Today we're back here with another tech video, and today we're going to be taking a look at MSI's Click BIOS 5. This is the fifth iteration, as you can see by the number 5, of the fantastic Click BIOS GUI that MSI have been using for a while. It's really really nice guys and hopefully you're not going to get too lost but if you have and you found your way over to this video no problem at all it accompanies my review of the Z10A the gaming board that MSI recently released for the Skylake series of motherboards and if you're a little bit lost then you've come to the right place so we're going to go through the easy mode of the BIOS and then into some more advanced features after that just to make sure that you guys are completely okay with how to set up the system and make sure that everything's running properly. Now the first thing that we're in here is the easy mode. To change over to the advanced mode is as easy as pressing this button here or hitting the F7 key. And one of the coolest things about this BIOS is actually there's a lot of integration between the two. So you can see all the overviews that we have for our XMP, our gain boost, which is a one click overclock, which we'll talk about more in a bit uh, more detail later on. Um, but also all the information about our motherboard, CPU, RAM, and all our boot priorities as well are all listed in this little section at the top that we have access to in both the advanced mode and the easy mode as well, which is really, really nice. There are a few things that you can change in easy mode, which are just some nice, super duper simple things. So we can open a, a hardware monitor, which is accessible from both the easy mode and the hard mode as well, which will show you your voltages, your CPU's current temperature. Now our temperatures are gonna be very, very high here because we're running the basic stock Intel uh, cooler heatsink thing, quite an old one uh, as well, but it's doing its job. It's keeping the system manageable, which is what we want. Uh, but you can see that it actually has all the different different uh, modifiers that are in here and you can change these um, if you want to which is actually really nice there are com some competitive uh, manufacturers out there that won't actually let you um, do the arcs and, and change all this kind of thing on the fly which is uh, which is really cool to see and then obviously if you want to you can change this all back to default or even to full speed and it'll just run completely full speed for as long as it wants to which is a really really nice way of doing things but for us we're on the default settings, that's absolutely fine, no problem at all. Uh, and we also have obviously uh, uh, the ability to M flash. Now this is in the advanced mode as well, so we'll just quickly touch on it now. Um, it's just a really quick way of being able to flash uh, or save the BIOS uh, current settings. So um, for example, if you want to have your BIOS in this state on another board, uh, then you can do that. The same with an OC profile that you can save or load over here. Um, and if you need to update your BIOS, then you would do that by going into the M flash mode. Nice and straightforward. Uh, but in the easy mode, mode the things that are specific to this we have some basic options uh, that we might want to work with uh, as we go we can turn on or off our HD audio controller to change to AC97 or full HD audio if we want to. We have a quick one touch switch to change from AHCI to RAID as well. So if you're running any RAID arrays, uh, any drives in uh, a RAID 0, 1, 5 or 10 or any other combination that you might have, you'll need to switch that over to RAID for them to be able to be recognized and for the Intel or MSI inbuilt uh, RAID arrays to be enabled so you can start using them. For us, for example, on this though, we only have a one terabyte SSD built into the board right now so we have AHCI enabled. You can also turn on fast boot if you want to to stop the full checksums that the uh, motherboard goes through to the uh, the initialization of the board itself. It's entirely up to you whether you do that. I personally leave that kind of stuff off uh, and you have the option to do uh, to do ROM LAN which I believe is to do with uh, interfacing in from uh, from server-based uh, loading of operating systems and, and bits and pieces like that but I'm not 100% sure but anyway it's there for you if you want it. Um, if you If you don't know what it is then leave it disabled because I'm pretty sure that that is something that if you knew what you were looking for, you would be going for something like that, but that's fine. Anyway, easy mode also goes through a number of different things about the board that you're using uh, and all the different bits and pieces of information that we need about the essentials of the computer, like our CPU, our memory, our storage, etc. The first thing that you can see about the CPU here is it does tell you some really basic things about the, the, the CPU and what you're currently running. So your core voltages, uh, your frequencies, and uh, whether or not you're running turbo boost and whether you're hyper-threading using virtualization technology, all that kind of stuff is in here. Um, and as you can see, we're running a CPU ratio of 46 at a base clock of 100 megahertz, which 100 times 46 gives us 4.6 gigahertz while well in the back there with a four core because we are running the Skylake 6600K CPU in this board. So it's it's doing pretty well, which is, is nice to see. Uh, now you also have the option of looking through uh, different bits and pieces of information about your memory, for example. 
one thing you want to make sure is that if you have bought any Remy that has any advanced settings or anything, your XMP profiles that you can see here, for example, we have an XMP profile of 2666 megahertz at 16... 17 17 36 timings at 1.2 volts which is not too much of a slouch uh, if you make sure that you have xmp on for that if you turn xmp off then that's not going to be running which is going to be uh, not very good so we want to make sure that we turn that on otherwise you're not getting any uh, value out of your memory anyway because obviously if you don't have that enabled then the motherboard's going to have a very very stock very very basic profile for your memory to run on and you're not getting what you paid for so nice and straightforward now as you can see a lot of these things we can't actually change in easy mode that's essentially why it is called easy mode it's like an overview for you um, if we did something like turn on game boost and um, then that's going to basically give us a little overclock but as you can see because i've actually done some modifications on this already um, it's not going to change anything that you can see here but if i press the little question mark button next to game boost you can see that actually if you're running a 6600k it'll give you a uh, overclock of 4.1 gigahertz and if you're running a 6700k you'll get an overclock of 4.4 gigahertz now obviously that's nowhere near what the the uh, motherboard and processors are capable of that's purely if you don't know what you're doing and you just want to run a really basic overclock so you get a little bit more performance but you don't really care about running balls to the walls then that would be an option for you but for us because we know what we're doing we're going to keep xmp on and game boost off now, the last couple of things, you have storage information as well. As you can see on the last port of my SATA board here, I am running the one gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo. And also you can see from the fans here that actually I'm running this system on a test bench rather than running it on any sort of fancy schmancy case. So it only has one CPU fan currently running and that's literally it for the system. Uh, apart from obviously the, the uh, fan inside the power supply, but we don't have any control over that anyway. So that's easy mode explained hopefully in a nice quick pace for you. I hope you're keeping up. Uh, in the advanced mode, there are a couple of additional features that I want to go over and some things that are unique to MSI boards that I haven't seen elsewhere, which I think are really cool little features. But start off with, I think it's best for us to go into the regular settings of the board. Now, as you can see, you're probably already used to this kind of stuff. This is where you can change things like dates and times and get your information about your motherboard, your serial number, etc., etc. Uh, but also you can do things like the advanced stuff, like if you wanted to enable Thunderbolt or if you wanted to go into your integrated graphics and turn it on or off or turn it into PEG or IGD or turn on multi-monitor options. Now, some of these things are, th are things that you're definitely going to want to be looking at doing if you're running, say, for example, uh, one screen on your uh, external GPU and one screen on your internal GPU or rather your onboard GPU. Because um, I used to do that when I was running on a Haswell system, or I think it was a Haswell system. Um, and uh, since I've moved over to X99, you don't have that feature anymore. But that's something that you have to enable uh, in the BIOS. So make sure you uh, you take a look and do that. More advanced information is available for all of these options in the uh, manual, obviously. But one thing that if you do get a little bit stuck, you do have the help that's on the uh, right-hand side here, which you can uh, show and highlight. And then it will just go through and teach you about every single thing. So, for example, if you want to know what the serial COM port zero configuration is, it sets the detailed configuration of the serial COM port zero. I mean, isn't that, like, obvious? I, I kind of thought that was obvious, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> these are really really basic uh ways of explaining about the different features of the bios guys if, you, if you're having any trouble google is your friend but anyway moving on from the the settings we also have an oc uh board as well which is actually quite a cool little panel um it's going to allow you to uh to change your ring ratios and uh your base clock frequencies and all that kind of stuff what we can do is we can actually modify this and uh, and change it over to automatic or to manual you know literally whatever we want to do um, you have an option for doing a OC Explore Expert so you can get some uh, like per core for example so for example on my x99 board I would run a like a 4.6 on a one core and a 4.5 on two 4.4 on three and then like 
going down to through the eight cores that I have on my other system. Um, but for this one, for example, it, it makes a lot more sense to have all cores because realistically, you don't really want to be messing with that unless you unless you really want to get the most that you possibly can out of your uh, CPU. For us, though, as I've shown you, we were able to get a nice uh, 4.6 gigahertz overclock out of this, which is really, really fantastic. And there's a few other things in here as well. Obviously, you can see the XMP is currently disabled. The only reason for that is because we haven't actually saved the changes on the motherboard yet. Seeing as we have XMP on here, when we restart the BIOS, that will actually uh, change to enabled. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, and there's obviously memory Z, some uh, CPU features, bits and pieces as well. If you wanted to perhaps turn off virtualization because nobody uses virtualization, then you can do that unless you're unless you're a person who knows that you need to use virtualization. That doesn't really need to be on, but never mind. Uh, and it's all in here, and you can basically just go through and overclock and, and modify exactly what you want and exactly how you want to do it. So I think that's a really, really nice way of, uh, of doing it as well. It's a completely separate thing from the regular settings of the board. Um, and it's really, really obvious and straightforward. So any of the overclocking guides over there on YouTube, if you haven't seen any before, then hopefully that's going to give you some really good information. And also, it's all just there for you. I mean, everything is, is literally here. And if you don't know what it does, that's just leaving it alone, <laughs> really. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, there's a couple more things that I want to quickly show you. This hardware monitor button here just shows you the same thing that we looked at earlier on, the uh, hardware monitor for the fans and the temperatures that the computer is currently getting to. But the last thing uh, that I wanted to go through is the board explorer, which is something that I've never seen on another uh, GUI before. And I think it's actually a really cool little feature. Obviously, you can see this is a photographic representation of the board that we're using right now. And you can just sort of highlight over different things and it will show you exactly what they do and what they're for. So the steel reinforced 16 slots are the two that we're going to be using for SLI if we wanted to run SLI graphics cards on here. Um, but you can also actually highlight onto uh, specific uh, connectors, like for example here, the SATA connections. And it will show you if you have anything plugged in. So right now, Currently, we have got this Samsung 850 Evo plugged into this port that it's showing you here. And it's a really good visual way of finding and identifying what it is that you're currently running. So I'm running a, a slot of RAM in here, but nothing in this one, one in here, and then nothing in this one again. You can see which processor I'm running, which is really, really cool. And even it goes as far as to tell you which ports each thing is using. So I can tell you that my Cooler Master Nova Touch 10 keyless keyboard that I use is uh, plugged into USB port 2. And my Razer Death Adder 2013 edition is plugged into USB port 1. How cool is that? You can go through USB, uh, uh, sorry, HDMI as well, um, which is really useful. And it even shows you the little external CD drive that I've got to be able to install the drivers and features for the motherboard. So it's a really, really cool little feature. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that has been an overview and quick demonstration of MSI's Click BIOS 5, I hope. That I've covered everything for you guys but if you do have any questions or you're struggling to understand anything that I've gone over and you want some more detail leave me a comment down below in the description of this video to tell me what exactly is the trouble that you're having and maybe uh, you know anything that you think I could be doing differently um, these hardware reviews are slightly newer to the channel um, but it's something that I intend to be doing quite a lot now so hopefully this has been really really useful and until next time guys I've been Kaf of the Kafcast. thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. You've been watching the Gapcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to us if you like what you see. That way I'll know to make more And that you really like me So You've been watching the Kefcast We hope you have enjoyed the show Don't forget to check out All of our other videos